Well, anything in general, me. Life in general, me. So well, there's, there's, you know, mm -hmm. there's probably other things that you like to talk about. Well, no, I, I enjoy farming. I've uh, always have farmed in the last 60 years. So you started, this is delicious. Yeah, yeah, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah interesting sheep then. So your father, your father was a farmer? Yes, but I lost him when I was only 18. Oh, right. uh, Yeah, I lost him in 1972, and January 72, so I know it was quite hard then. So you were 18 when? 18, coming 19 in October. Inherited. Yeah, well, yes. I, uh, I uh, kept on the farm with my mother until she retired in, um, uh, when I got married in 1983. And, uh, where, where was the farm? In Tingan. Which is, where's that? It's about half a mile from here, so looking down on the village. Mudvai, yes, Mudvai. Went to the local school here as well. Did, did you want to take the farm on? Well, uh, it was a case of must. I wanted to be an auctioneer at one time. Auctioneer? Yeah, when I was in school, I wanted to be an auctioneer. But um, that was out of the question then, wasn't it? You know, I didn't go to any college. I didn't learn much in school either. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, how did you how did you learn the trade? Well, I didn't learn the trade. I just uh, envied the auctioneers when I was young. You know, no, when I mean the farming. Oh, farming! Well, you you inherit it. You watch your father what he's doing, and he and you just carry on. And um, yeah, it's been very successful life for me. Uh, in in so a particular type of sheep. Well, we had uh, Welsh cross Cheviot ewes, uh, and then, you know, we, we had 300 ewes then when my father died in 1972, but uh, we progressed and uh, um, we went up to nearly 2,000 sheep. 2,000? Yes, before the last, we sheared in 2015, 2,100 sheep, um, 1,600 breeding ewes and 500 um, hogs, keep them on, you know, as replacements. But we crossed a lot of the Cheviot ewes then with the Texel and Bluefest Lester and to get the Texels. Yeah. And um, we had about 1,000 ewes on the mountain. We had, we've got mountain rights on the Brecon Beacons. Well, on Manidbach it is, but it's part of the Brecon, uh, of the, um, um, the West Common anyway. Yeah. It's a 22,000 acre common, you know. Wow. And um, I've been treasurer of that for 40 odd years. Um, they had to register the rights on the Black Mountain um, in 1965-68. Everybody had to register their rights. Um, and I think 681 people registered the rights on the common of the Black Mountain uh, during them three years. Uh, it was compulsory. And uh, if you wanted to uh, have rights on the hill then, you know. How many sheep did you have on the... On well, it was up to the uh, particular farm to register how many sheep they, ke they kept. Uh -huh. You know, this is the question today that people are asking. Yeah. Why haven't I got more rights? Well, if you only had 300 sheep, you couldn't... More or less, you were registering 300 sheep. Right. See? But, you know, as it progresses, you bought more land. How do you keep track of them? Well, you had earmarks in the sheep. And you got a year back, a uh, year, year mark book. Um, that was done in 1962. A new one was done. There was an old one. I got one going back to 1929. But um, all the year backs are in it. How do you know your sheep are going to stay in that area? Well, yeah. Well, you turn the ewes and lambs. You turn the lambs up in with the ewes in May, and, and then and then they 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 know where the stint are. Stint. That, stint. A rosra, we call it in Welsh. But it's a stint where they graze on the hill. Where they stop. They stop, well, more or less. That's, that's, a, that's a benefit of um, the court leet once a year, twice a year. We have a court leet to collect the strays. Your ear was gone 10 miles, perhaps, because it's an open hill, 22,000 acres. And not many stray that gone. Not many had gone stray. But um, very interesting. And you have a court leet. It still exists. Um, once a year, in the uh, first, um, first uh, Monday in, uh, in July, every year you, you got a court lead. You got to be a 13 to other jury. All the court, and the solicitor comes there, and you, if there are any sheep that are stay and can't be found and known, they go forfeit. Tell me, how, 
how do you, um, how do you see this whole area? How has it changed in the last 50 years? It's, it's changed tremendous in the last 20 years. You know, the decline of uh, closing the school, losing the shop, losing the pub, and then this hall, the, the new one. We were lucky to have the uh, lottery grant to build this hall, um, uh, 450,000 uh, from the lottery and other grants as well to build this magnificent hall in 2000. I think the project started in 2006 and it was completed by 2009 or 11, uh, 2010, I think it was open. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you find that um, people have left the area? Oh yes, youngsters, you know, when the, when the government introduced National Park in the early 70s, um, Nothing against the National Park. It's good to preserve uh, the, the, the heritage, yes, but um, people couldn't build here. You know, that is the planning was a big problem then. So the youngsters have moved away. Once they went to college, they moved away and they haven't come back. In later life, they would like to come back, but there are no houses here now because we didn't build 30 years ago. Mm. And it's a big problem to get planning at the moment. Yeah. You know, this is a trouble. There was talk on the radio yesterday about building new houses, but it's yeah. England. England, yes, 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 yes. No one really talks about Wales very much. Well, not much, no, but we, we, we need houses. We need a lot of houses in the area, you know, to keep the youngsters here. You know, once you lose a school, you lose the heart of the community, don't you? You know, they move away, they move, the, the, the primary children went to Landavri or Langadag. And when I was in Pantakelin school in Landavri, there was over 600 children there. You know, they closed up uh, three or four years ago, they closed up and they took them all down to, taken them all down to Sandailo, built a massive school there with 1,400 pupils there. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that, but some of these children got to travel a long, long way, where they lose the heritage of, of, of where they were born, you know. They forget it as they move on, progress. Everybody wants to live in Cardiff, the youngsters today, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, they, they, they want to live in the urban, what, what, is, what is the rural areas, what, what, what does it offer people? Well, farming mostly, rural areas, it's all farming, there's no factories here. You know, if you go down the valleys, there was always factories and there was the coal mines as well and it helped generate, you know, if your grandfather and father went to the mine, you were, you were brought up to go to the mine. It's the same in farming. If you were born on a farm, if you didn't have too much education in your head, you go farming. You know, that was uh, what they wanted to do. You followed your instinct, and you try and do the best of that. Yeah. Tell me about your involvement with uh, choirs. Choir, I joined, choir? male voice choir in 1979. I joined in 1979. First Wednesday uh, of November 1979, I joined the choir uh, in Thunderbury and um, I wasn't married yet then and, um, and it was hard to fit the uh, coating business in and, and singing and I've enjoyed every moment of it. Your other half didn't, didn't like it? Oh, no, I, I don't say, but you know, Wednesday night I used to go courting as well, ah. but you had to choose between one of the two, in it. So I had to change the night. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, yes. What's your repertoire like? Uh, very, very good. Very good. Welsh? Well, no, no, mixed, mixed, mixed. We sing because we got a lot of um, English um, singers in us, but they learn Welsh, I play to them. Yes, 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 yes. Any youngsters? Yes, um, because of COVID, we had to shut down for about six, seven months. Um, we lost a lot of people. We were about f not far off 50 then, and we lost a few people. And uh, one or two died, unfortunately. A couple had died, uh, the, not from COVID, but they passed away. So um, we had to, um, we put the uh, filiates out, and we had a recruitment night. And we recruitment recru required required um, 15 people, 15. so we're up again to 45, 46 uh, choristers. And where, where's the largest place you've sung? Well, we sang in the La Albatard many times in London. Yes, and we went to Germany. We sang in Germany. We sang in Britain, in uh, in France. Um, not not that kind of 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 of, uh, of numbers then. We I think we were out the 28, 30 when we went to Germany and France.
but it was a nice experience. Is there any rivalry between yourselves and No, no, no. It's nice to join up sometimes with other choirs and have a drink and have a sing song in the pub. No, you know, every conductor is different. Every conductor, is different. and you, you obey to the rules of the conductor, don't you? You know, it's uh, that's what choir is all about. But it's more than singing. It's the social side of it. You know, every Wednesday night we meet in Landauri at eight o'clock until ten. We go to the bar then. Not everybody, but half of the choir go to the bar and have a drink and another sing song in there with visitors all over the world coming to the castle to hear us. In 1979, was it formed out of agriculture? No, 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 no. It has formed back in the 50s. Oh. The choir started. Joined, yes. uh, yeah, I joined. No, no. Because we sell in Britain this year now 125 years of the existence of the choir. It's 125 years. So it was, you know, it's a long time, isn't it? Did it come out of agriculture? Yes. The, 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 the agriculture communities, I would say. You know, I don't remember it, but yes. You know, people, you know, Wales is a land of song, isn't it? Yeah. Wales is a land of song. So there was a, uh, you know, people wanted to sing, and probably you got to have a leader to start these things. You say, you start a show, or start a choir, start anything. You got to have a leader. And uh, probably they had a good leader, and they went round and had a choir. Do you have the, the cattle farmers at the back? And the no, the no, sheep no, the no, no. We're all mixed and mingled, and we don't talk much about sheep farming. And uh, after the choir, we enjoy ourselves and we mingle with everybody. Nobody's better than anybody else in the world, is it? It's just a level, of level playing field, and we enjoy it. And everybody that's joined us now in the last two years, youngsters, I'm sure we've had about eight youngsters under 30, and they, they enjoy it. They thoroughly enjoy it. And then what's the future for Maguire and this, this area? Well, there are, there are, there's always future in farming because um, you need the food. We'll need food, won't we? There is always a future for farming, but I think we'll all have to change. Especially, uh, we, people have to listen to youngsters because it's hard for them to start these days. But um, people have to change. Um, farmers are very set in their ways, ways aren't they? So, but they'll have to change and go with the modern, what the government demands. A um, couple of years ago, you've never heard of carbon footprint. This is coming a big issue. And it's uh, tree planting is coming a big issue. Not everybody agrees with tree planting, but the right tree in the right place is there is a potential for farmers to do a little bit of money to keep going. You know, farmers, uh, you know, f there's a good f future there if you can afford to buy the land. The land is going quite expensive now. It's the same as properties, they've gone very expensive. So it's very hard for these youngsters to start. But um, during my father, when he started in 1939, farming in 1939, my father and mother, it was all estates in Madurai. And I think history is starting to repeat itself. It'll go back to estate, you know? A gentleman just walked into the room here now. He's just bought a big estate here now. And um, he's so, such a nice gentleman, he's renting it out to young people. So um, it's very nice that we've got people like that. Will you ever retire? I will. I will. My farm is for sale at the right price. <laughs> are you, are you, but you're not passing your farm on? My son wouldn't want it. What's your son do? He's a teacher. Oh, of course he is. He's a teacher in Hida Wine School. He's always been there, say, 15 years old. And his partner, and they're all both children, but they've got a grandson. He might want it, but I won't see him. He's only three years old, but... Uh, and well, yes, he enjoys coming up on a Sunday and drives a tractor with you now, actually. Yes, but it's lovely, yes. Everyone on the farm learns to drive. Well, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. But it's lovely, lovely life. Farming is lovely life. And if you can combine the two, farming and choir, what more can you want? They'll be singing in heaven if you go there. Hello. <laughs>